Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Voyager class Artfire and Nightstick from the Transformers Generation Selects line from Hasbro. So as you can see it comes in this kind of standard cardboard box with the kind of spray paint look to it. Not really too much going on with the packaging. If we go ahead and open this up and I zoom out a little bit here you can actually see Artfire. Uh, surprised he's actually fully in a plastic tray since they're making that move away from plastic packaging. I thought that he would be just kind of like tied down to a piece of cardboard, but I'm assuming this is probably one of the last ones to get a full uh, plastic tray. You can see Nightstick included here, Artfire, a really nice repaint of Inferno. Get some fun effect pieces here and the rest of his accessories. So uh, the only other things in the box are this little like warning page you always get and then of course the instructions here. So I'm going to go ahead and get him out of the plastic here and we'll take a closer look. So here are the two figures out of the packaging, and we'll start over here with Nightstick first. Um, now if you're anything like me, you might be asking yourself, uh, hey, why is Nightstick coming with Artfire and not Cyclonus? Because I'm used to him coming with Cyclonus. Uh, but it turns out because in the U.S. continuity, we had that three-part season four episode, The Rebirth, but Japan didn't do any of that. They just made their own series, The Headmasters, so they didn't incorporate that. So uh, Artfire is a Japanese-only character, and as such, they decided to pair Nightstick with him because they never paired him with Cyclonus, so that's the differentiation. But if you want to go ahead and give this guy to your Cyclonus figure, you absolutely could. Uh, he looks good. He's a very typical Siege uh, Target Master here. Not too much going on with him, but nice paint here for the face. I think that looks pretty cool. I kind of wish these guys had individually painted eyes, but I get it. They're very tiny. Uh, you have a ball joint for the shoulder. You have a ball joint for the hip. And that's pretty much it for articulation. I guess technically he has an ab crunch. <laughs> but it's because of the transformation. So all you do is flip this up to cover the head. Go ahead and get that ab crunch going so you can get a full 90 degree bend. Then you're going to peg the two legs together like so. Then these two tabs on the front of the feet are going to tab in here. So that drops down and tabs in. And then what I always appreciated, you have this little slit here. And there's a little tab on the inside of the forearm. And so you can peg those on. So you get a really nice, solid transformation, holds up really well. And it's kind of cool, the feet have like little missile salvos in them, so... Pretty cool little Target Master, I like it. And it's very easy to just pop this into his hand. There you go. And then he is equipped with his Target Master partner. He does come with a regular gun as well, so if you want him to dual wield guns, you can certainly do so. We'll take both of these out for now. Uh, he also comes with the typical like hand replacement piece that Inferno is known for. So if you want to fold the one hand into the forearm, you can go ahead and peg that in and then give him like the nozzle hand. It's whatever you prefer. You got a lot of options, which is nice. So we'll take that out. Uh, he does have a few other accessories. He's got this little piece here that you can peg into the side of his head which is another kind of alternate water cannon or laser gun, whichever you prefer. And then he's got these two little hose pieces that you just kind of peg into the side of his leg. I don't even know why these come off, honestly. They tell you to take them off for the transformation, then you end up pegging them back in in the same exact spot. So I don't know why they don't just stay on. I guess so you can take them out. So if you want to peg in guns or other weapons, you have that option because it's all the same size pegs. So you have two peg holes here on the side of the arms and then... There's not really anyone on the leg, so if you want to, you know, pop this off and peg a gun in here or something, you certainly could. Or if you have weapon weaponizers, you know, whatever you prefer. So I guess that makes sense. They're, they're removable for that reason. The other thing that I think is fun is they give you some effect pieces here. So they give you two effect pieces, well, two of each. So you can peg these in to the Target Master. So you get a set of those. You also get a set of these. I think the uh, translucent blue looks great. I really like that a lot. The other thing that's cool is you can peg this in up here. You can peg this into his other gun. You can also peg it into the little hand nozzle piece. So that's the nice thing about these weapons. You know, the ports are all the same. The effect pieces are universal. You can peg them in wherever you like. So I really appreciate that. But yeah, he looks really good. I think they did a nice job with them. Really nice paint applications. I like the blue, white, and red color scheme. I think that looks really good. 
We'll do a quick comparison with Inferno here. So you can see Inferno is definitely a lot more red. Pretty much the entire legs are red, whereas over here you have a little bit of black, a little bit of white to break that up. I love the white chest piece over here. You also have uh, pretty much the same face, but you have the blue accents instead of the yellow accents on the ear pieces. I, I guess their ears, whatever you want to call them, the little head horns. Uh, otherwise, pretty similar. You got the same blue eyes, silver face, silver head crest. That's all pretty much the same. I really like the blue tinted windows. I think that's really nice. Autobot symbols in the same place. Got a little bit of black paint here on the shoulders. But otherwise, for the most part, pretty similar. I mean, it is the exact same mold. So not a ton different going on. But I just wanted to do a quick comparison there. Uh, articulation, we'll just run through really quick. Again, it's going to be the exact same as Inferno. You have the head on a swivel. I don't think it's a ball joint. I mean, I guess technically you can move this a little bit, but really that's the whole head section that you're moving a little bit. So yeah, it's really just a swivel side to side. You have a hinge out to the side. You have a swivel in the shoulder, bicep swivel, uh, 90 degrees in the elbow, nothing in the wrist. Um, that's utilizing the bicep swivel. So yeah, because of the way they fold into the forearm for the transformation, nothing in the wrist. You have a waist swivel there. You have really nice hip articulation. You can kick really far forward, all the way back, out to the side. Uh, thigh swivel, I would say just about 90 in the knee. You got the ankle tilt, as per usual. Uh, you have kind of a weird, like if you want to move it forward because of the way it transforms, you can kind of pull something off. Um, but really, that just kind of collapses and pegs into itself. So really, you get the ankle tilt. But it's all the articulation you'd expect, and I think it works. And like I said, I love the color scheme. I think the, the white and the blue really break up all the red. I still think Inferno looks good. He was just a lot of red. And this guy just has a lot of a couple pops of color here to really just break it up and looks really sharp. So let's go ahead, we'll get into the transformation. So just to be consistent with the instructions, I've gone ahead and removed all of his accessories. I took the piece off here, which you would definitely want to remove anyway, but I took the hose pieces off his legs. I'm pretty sure we're gonna end up pegging them back into the exact same spot, but just for consistency with the directions, I took them off so we don't run into any problems. So we're gonna start by going ahead and folding the hands into the forearms, very simple. These wing pieces on the side of the head will actually fold back and there's a little tab right here which is going to tab into this spot right here. So this will go back and that will tab against. You're going to kind of lift this section up and it will come away. There were kind of little tabs right here that were keeping the head in place. And then this is going to de-accordion out and come all the way back like so. You can kind of stretch this all the way out. You're going to take the head and you're going to rotate this around. 180 degrees so that's being covered up then you're going to now this can be a little difficult because it kind of catches on the side so you might want to kind of pull these away just a little bit just to get clearance but you need to wiggle this piece oh come on now there we go this will rotate up and snap into place like so and then this will kind of fold back like that so you just kind of have this piece hanging back here so you're going to take the feet and you're going to pop those out like i showed earlier and then they will come down and sit down like this. At this point, you can kind of bring this whole piece down. You can see how there's a peg right here and a peg hole there. So this is gonna come down and peg there. You can see that there are two peg holes on the feet and they are gonna peg into these pieces right here. So this is gonna come down and peg into place. And if you remember the original, uh, I think it was Earthrise Grapple. I was like, was he Kingdom? No, he was Earthrise. Uh, <laughs> Earthrise Grapple. Those pegs were really tight, and a lot of people were having trouble with them snapping off once they would push them in all the way. They had fixed that for Inferno. It's still fixed here for Artfire, so you can peg those in all the way, and they pop out really easily, so you do not have to worry about that issue. That has long since been fixed, which is nice. Uh, at this point, you're going to uh, bring the arms straight like this, and then we are going to rotate them around like so. And then you want to rotate this around. I think these have to be on the bottom. Yes, yeah, so the open fist should be facing up. And then this will come around. And you can see, and you know, I'm still doing this wrong. I'm still doing this wrong. Uh, you can. The way to figure it out is there's a little <laughs> slit on the side and there's a tab over here. And so you do it however those tab together. There you go. So I was wrong. The, the, the peg holes have to be facing up. These peg holes right here and here will come down and peg into these tabs right here and here. So when this comes down like so, 
that will peg the hands into place like that. And then you're just gonna take this and rotate it around like so. And there you go, we have our fire engine. Now at this point you can go ahead and peg in all of his accessories, we'll bring the hoses back. And like I said, you probably could have left them on, but I'm just gonna go ahead and peg these back on now. This piece, which was on the side of his head, is now gonna get pegged in over here on the side of the hose ladder piece. Uh, you can actually take the gun if you would like, and you can peg this onto the side. There's storage for that as well. Technically, you could take Nightstick and peg him over here if you'd like. I'll give him his other effect piece so he doesn't look goofy. There you go. And then uh, this piece here, which is the alternate hand piece, you can see how it has a slit there on the side. You can tab that in right there. So he's got really nice accessory storage. You can really store just about everything in his vehicle mode, which is greatly appreciated. And I'm going to make this difficult for myself by having Nightstick in the way. There we go. That tabs on like that. And then you can pull this out. This ladder does pop out. And then you can kind of angle this around if you want. So, okay, that's not supposed to unpeg. There we go. This is supposed to move up. There we go. <laughs> so this can uh, move up and down. It can spin side to side. And then you can retract this a little bit in and out. Move this around. So you have that nice ladder movement there since he is a fire truck. And he rolls very nicely. Let me angle this down. So yeah, really great vehicle mode. It's a fun transformation. I think it's very simple to do back and forth. It all makes sense. It all snaps together pretty securely. And it's very reminiscent of the original G1 toy, which I think is nice. It's pretty much the same way Grapple and Inferno and everyone transformed back in the day. So very, very cool. I think this is a really fantastic release. I honestly can't recommend it enough. I mean, the Inferno mold was already great to begin with, and this is just a really fun repaint of it. Yes, Artfire is a Japanese-only character, so you might not be super familiar with him, but it's a fun repaint of Inferno with a Target Master, so what else do you really need to know? I think he looks fantastic. All the paint applications are really sharp. The color scheme's great. I love the blue and silver on the face. I think that really pops. I love the blue-tinted windows. I love the headlights and everything. All that kind of translucent plastic really looks good. Autobot symbol looks great. I love that he can actually have all of his accessories on him at one time because he's got enough guns and blasters and things that he can wield all of the effect pieces they give him. And you can even store that extra hand piece on the back there if you don't want to use it right away. So I think that's really cool. I appreciate uh, item storage on figures. <laughs> I always have. But yeah, he's really great. It's a solid mold. Great articulation. Uh, like I said, it was great as Grapple. It was great as Inferno. It's even better as Art fire i appreciate that they went back and fixed that issue with that piece snapping into the legs in the vehicle mode that was fixed with inferno but it still carries over here so you don't have to worry about any of that uh yeah i just i really don't have anything to complain about this guy i think he's a ton of fun i definitely recommend him i got mine from gamestop actually i had it pre-ordered on hasbro pulse for a while but it never came in and then gamestop had a sale so i ended up getting it a little bit cheaper over there so it's kind of a win-win because they had it in stock and I don't know when Hasbro is going to get theirs. They're always so weird about that stuff. Uh, but wherever you can track this guy down, I definitely think he's worth picking up. It's a really solid release, and I'm having a ton of fun with it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.